Folks, here's a third video today, still over at the Mayaka State Forest, and we're starting to make our way back to the uh, trailhead. So, while we're actually walking through this little section here, we wanted to talk a bit about some of the invasive plants that you can find that can actually impact the ecosystem. Sean, here we are. So you'll usually see invasive species in disturbed areas, areas where, you know, something has removed the initial plant life. That's why you see so many species of invasives on roadsides or ditches or in yards, which generally don't have a strong native habitat. But sometimes you'll even see them in the middle of native ecosystems, especially if there's other invasive species like hogs making disturbed ground. Right. This is a Brazilian pepper tree in the middle of Mayaka State Forest. This should not be here. This is a class one invasive species and one of the few that is illegal to grow, propagate, or own. We've also seen several other invasives such as the Maluka tree, mm -hmm. Caesar weed, Old World climbing fern. And that's one of the big reasons to plant native plants. Not only do you help all the wildlife, but you also prevent literally billions of dollars being spent controlling invasive plants. And these plants become invasive because they don't have anything here in Florida that eats it. If you look at these Brazilian pepper trees, they grow so fast because every leaf is perfect. There's nothing eating it, nothing that controls it. And they're pollinated mostly by European honeybees. They're not even pollinated by native insects all that much. So they have very little wildlife value and they actually will take up and displace entire native plant communities. As you can see here where these Brazilian pepper trees grow, they shade out and remove all other plants. So it creates less opportunity for native plants to yeah. grow. But yeah, so the clue is in the name. These were introduced from parts of South America, as a matter of fact. And, you know, this was probably back in the early 1900s or even 1800s as well. And the knowledge of invasive plants was lesser known at the time because they didn't know what the impact would be. So then what happened was these became invasive to this part of Florida. Or worse, they did know the impact and they brought them intentionally. The paper bark tree or the Malaluca was brought here specifically to get rid of Florida swamps. Yep. Now we realize how important they are, but back then they wanted to completely change and dominate the landscape. And that's not the way we should be doing it. We should be working with the landscape, not only because it's better, you know, for the wildlife, for a lot of people spiritually or culturally, but also it's cheaper. Right. Just let what's native grow. <laughs> That's all you can do, you guys. And I'm trying to think, is there any particular bio controls for the Brazilian pepper tree? They, there wasn't until just this year where they released something called the Brazilian pepper thrip, which doesn't kill the whole tree, but it really eats and cuts back on the last six inches of the branch. And when you look at these Brazilian pepper branches, most of the flowers and the fruits are on the end of the branch. So these thrips really slow the spread of it, but we still have to work to remove the original trees. Right. So in a sense, it is still a work in progress, but sometimes you just got to do what you can. Yeah, and prevention is the best way. So if it's not native and it's not planted, and it's not, sorry, if it's not native and you're not eating it, don't plant it. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like what I, how I like to think of it is when in doubt, leave it out. That's a motto I like to use when it comes to invasive plants in general. But yeah, you really have to watch out for those. And usually when they come later into bloom, they, they don't exactly look like peppers. They kind of look a bit more like, uh, uh, what would you think, Sean? They look very similar to holly trees, like yeah. the moon holly. But the big difference is pepper trees will get big clumps of berries, whereas most of our native holly trees will have the berries individually. Right. That's the big difference. Yeah. And also, if you're allergic to poison ivy, the Brazilian pepper tree can give you an allergic reaction. Our native hollies will not. In fact, most of our native holly trees have caffeine in them. There is a very famous Native American chieftain called Chief Osceola, where many towns and cities and roads are named after him. And you might actually realize that Osceola translates to roughly black drink shouter. Oh. You would drink a bunch of holly tea yep. and then go into combat. Okay. So a bit some cultural history too. Merged into one video. How about that? That's awesome. It's always the best way. So all right, you guys. 
I'll uh, be sure to even provide an article in the video description in case if any of you want to read a bit further on the Brazilian pepper tree and the threats that they can pose in a given habitat. So all right, you guys, hope you all enjoy your Wacky Wednesday once again. And Journey on a Journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.